Alrighty, I'm here with Lee Meinhardt. She is an American visionary kitsch painter and she's going to talk about her inspiration, artistic inspiration specifically. And from her Facebook, uh, Meinhardt Studio, her page on Facebook, we have the description, it's the artist statement, and I want to read that here. She says, I suppose my paintings are about the idea of myth being reality. A kind of creationism meets science. Dragons are angels to me. I know my work may seem like the fantasy genre, but in it really isn't. My work is visionary and that it is based off of spiritual experiences or mystical ideas. And it is kitsch because it is constructed to look and be timeless. Therefore, I call my work visionary kitsch. I really like that. I really like that. And so we will get straight into... Uh, you previously mentioned three artistic inspirations you want to... Yes, so um, <clears throat> I would say it's a given that uh, I'm very heavily inspired by Odd Nerdrum. Um, I studied with him. Um, uh, I used the same palette as him, uh, the same materials. Uh, I was very drawn to the way that... Um, he depicts uh, narratives in a way that it looks very old, like you can't tell what time it's coming from. Um, and actually what I find really intriguing about his work is uh, the color range uh, that he can get because he just uses two colors. It's red and yellow, uh, and you got your neutrals, white and black. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a name for that palette. It's called the Apelles palette. Okay. Um, and Apelles was the uh, court painter of Julius Caesar. Um, now you actually you actually went abroad from the United States, and you actually studied and worked with, and you know, uh, was a student of Odds. Yes. Yes. Um, I was. Yeah, I was a student of his for three months, uh, between France and Norway. Um, at the time he had a home in France, so I went there first and then, uh, to Norway, uh, I was in Norway for two months. I was very briefly there in France and then I, um, uh, went back to France from Norway for, um, probably like three or four more weeks, uh, before heading home. Um, that was almost ten years ago now. That was about nine years ago. Uh, yeah, actually I think it has been ten years. Mm. Almost. So, um. Uh, there's that, and I went back there a second time, uh, a couple, like not not too long ago, maybe four or five years ago, um, uh, for like two weeks, uh, very briefly. Um, but yeah, it was a very pleasant experience, and um, I learned a lot. Um, watching him paint was, um, you know, one one of the greatest things I've ever experienced in my life. He's like a, uh, he's like a founder of like the kitsch movement. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there is another philosopher that came up with it originally. Um, I don't remember his name right now. Uh, but Odd Nerdrum's the one who really took this original philosophy that, uh, and turned it into an art movement. Um, it's not something you can apply to just painting, because kitsch itself is a philosophy uh, that can apply to any art medium. So it can be applied to music, it can be applied, uh, obviously, to painting, um, theater, uh, movies, all kinds of uh, formats. Uh, but kitsch, you're basically uh, trying to make something look timeless as timeless as you can. Um, so instead of painting someone in clothes of the modern time, well, that makes the picture more temporary. That makes it more modern because you're attaching a time. Uh, yes, you're making it contemporary. So you avoid that. Yeah, you're so if I were to direction. paint someone wearing a cloak, that, you know, that person, that's a soul that could exist in any time, now, the future, in the past. Uh, it's, it becomes more universal, it becomes more eternal. So 
uh, and the same thing is applied to the palette too. Like by having a more, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A uh, harmonized palette, a uh, limited palette, it looks more mature. And if you want to add more outside colors, you can, but you do it uh, very, very little um, in glazes, uh, very minutely. But yeah, I was actually really drawn to uh, how much color he can bring out in just the Apalis palette, in just the simple palette. There, you can really make uh, a gray look blue by placing warm colors next to it. And that was fascinating to me um, because that's what I went to college to learn. And I wasn't taught that. I wasn't taught uh, at all. You are very lucky to find any traditional painter instructors in college these days, or uh, at least on the East Coast. So um, I was very, I was very drawn to uh, how much color actually uh, is brought out in his paintings. And uh, maybe he might be surprised if I said that, but. Um, I know a lot of people are, are attracted to the tonal uh, palette, the, the very limited palette, but um, I actually really like the color uh, because he does it so subtle, but it looks so, uh, I wouldn't even call it real, but it's, it's more beautiful than life. It's transcendental. That's how beautiful it is. Uh, All right, he's a legendary, legendary artist in the kitsch movement, and uh, your work is continuing in that in that same movement. Now, this other this other artist you mentioned, uh, Brian Froud. Now, that's from when you were younger. This is like what inspired you when you even like got into art. Yeah, so uh, I would say Brian Froud was the one who actually really uh, started it for me, and. Uh, I received his book, Good Fairies, Bad Fairies, as my 12th year birthday present. And uh, those fairies were very beautiful to me. The way he depicts light, the way uh, the wings and the clothing look like they're part of the fairy itself. Um, it's, it was very uh, unique. It was, uh, I was very, very drawn to um, the color range too. And actually that's a similarity I've seen in on Eurotrim's paintings is uh, if you compare Brian Froud's uh, fairy illustrations with some of on Eurotrim's more colorful works, uh, there's like this similar color palette going on. Um, like I suppose green's not really a common color that's used um, in either of them really. But um, that was what I was really uh, drawn to with Odd's works. And, and it was just a, uh, I just seen this Brian Froud quality in his paintings and it's just, oh, that's really interesting. And then when I go there and I find out that he only uses this limited palette and I was like how can you get this color range I, it's so dynamic it's so beautiful like how how did you do it and he would insist that the blue is a gray and it looks blue you can get it to look blue by placing very warm colors next to it and it was hard for me to believe at first but then when I actually started doing it and I continued doing it and I started seeing he was right. And uh, one time I did a painting, a small landscape painting. Uh, and, well, I should say I did two, two small landscape paintings. And uh, with one of them, I did the gray as a blue for the sky uh, using the Apalis palette. And then for the other painting, I used a blue, like a cerulean blue right out of the tube and the the paley's palette sky looked much more mature it looked like something you would find in a museum 
And the other one, it looked like um, the one that was out of the blue out of the tube landscape. It looked very childish. It kind of looked uh, like a child with crowns made it almost. Like it just has this immaturity to it. Um, the, the change just from using that color was astounding. So uh, using that limited palette uh, is really, really uh, what I find the most impressive. Um, the research odds did to uh, share that with others uh, is very profound. All right, now we'll move on to the third one. The third artistic influence you are a big fan of the uh, Disney's Kingdom Hearts series. Uh, I wouldn't call it Disney's, but uh, the, it's the writer, the original. Oh, okay, writer. well, okay, okay. Right. I, 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 yeah. The IP, though. The IP's owned by Disney, I think. I believe so. He's He is an independent artist. But he just collaborates with Disney. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm familiar with the artist. He's uh, he's very talented. Uh, what is it about Kingdom Hearts, though? That, that, you know what? Uh, well, I grew up with Kingdom Hearts, and uh, I don't know. It was very uh, meaningful to me at the time. Uh, you know, I'm one of the veteran players. Uh, so to speak, I like I grew up with these games, and um, uh, I felt like it was really helpful at the time uh, with the living situation um, I had at the time. It, it I felt like it was like an outlet for me, being like a fifteen year old kid and playing this game after school with my friends. Um, and you know, it's a game about relationships, so it just was really. Uh, it was just a very meaningful game. Okay, so it's nostalgic and it's uh, it's uh, it's a, it's something you could possibly draw from for pieces in the future, you know. Yeah, yeah, and the fact that it's still ongoing, um, you know, the way fans ha still have a say uh, with Tessia Norma's uh, writing, it's. Uh, I'm pronouncing that right. If uh, it's really a beautiful thing uh, that just continues to evolve, uh, it's uh, you know, it's so fun. It's so fun to be able to look forward to it. Um, things being brought up in the older games and. Uh, we still don't quite know what the answers are and they're still being answered today like 20 years 20 plus years in the future it's uh, stuff like that keeps you coming back to something it has like its own kind of kitsch deal where you d you could you could almost put it anywhere past present or future oh so, you know. yeah yeah the, you know because it's this story of this boy that uh fights darkness and going to different worlds doing it um you know and uh, the importance of friends along the way it's uh it's a very pure uh high vibrational game uh i like how it just instantly makes you feel good um and yet there's some very there, there's some very Don Juanian uh, intense material in, in Kingdom Hearts. I could do, a, I could do a whole uh, talk at some point about Kingdom Hearts alone. That's how much I love it. Um, well, we'll stick here to your uh, little shots on your fam, your your art, your page on Facebook. It's uh, it's it's by your name, Lee Meinhart, and uh, you have. Uh, uh, my Heart Gallery. Yeah, uh, almost uh, social media um, that can be found under My Heart Studio. Uh, so Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, like you just search for My Heart Studio and you'll find me. Um, you can search for my name too, but uh, My Heart Studio is the most common uh, 
handle I use. Alright, and your email, uh, you want to give that out? Uh, it's just my name, Lee Meinhardt at LeeMeinhardt.com. Perfect. Alright, well, thank you for sharing any you about your three artistic inspirations. Thank you. <laughs>